shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be When this flesh and heart shall fail And mortal eyes shall cease I shall possess within the veil A life of joy and peace. We've all been led to believe that Dred Scott's case was something unusual, something out of the ordinary. A slave suing his owner for his freedom. And what I'm about to tell you is something that's not known by most teachers in history at the college level. There were actually, we have documentation on over 209 slaves who sued for their freedom. Here? Here, in this courthouse. Okay. Out of two, there would be a hundred who sued here before Dredd, and over a hundred who would sue here after him. His case was nothing. Why does his receive so much acclaim then? Yeah, that's the question. And yeah, why did we all learn about Dred Scott? And why have we completely forgotten about the other 208? The question, or the answer to that question, uh, is really what history, most of history is really all about timing. Hmm. And uh, naturally, it was always personal for Dred, his wife, Harriet, and their two daughters, their Lizzie and Eliza. But it was much bigger than Dred Scott. The country was getting ready for a civil war. And it was the decision by the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court, 11 years after it started here. There would be five trials in all, the first two years. Eleven years later, the United States Supreme Court. The only one that Dredd would win is the one that was here. All of the rest would be losers. In fact, out of the 209 slaves that sued here for their freedom, almost half, 90, would actually receive their freedom by juries of 12 white men. Really? Prior to the Civil War. Again, what I'm, these facts I'm giving you are not known by teachers at the college level. And you guys have access to all that type of stuff here? Those are the, the court record, 